Mm. All right. Hi, sweet friend. Welcome to our show, Watercolor Happy Hour, where we show you how to make a cocktail and also how to paint it with watercolors. My name is Volta. I'm a watercolor artist and illustrator behind Color Snack, and this is my husband, Dan. And I am a white female with um, medium leg hair, wearing a black shirt, and we are inside of a blue kitchen with white counters. And Dan's wearing a black shirt. He's a white male. I am. <laughs> With curly hair, but it's tied back. Yeah, and yeah, I'm rocking, rocking the ponytail. <laughs> I, I do say, like, like, I know the, the inclusivity is, is an awesome thing. We'll get that yeah. more. Yeah, so it's in an effort for people that are listening to give them a little more context. Yeah. yeah so, like, right now, I'm, I'm sitting here sipping this, this mezcal and trying to figure out a good way to explain to people how a great mezcal has this like petrichor sort of smoky rain on the rocks slash like you know uh if you if you've ever sat on the corner of a street and eaten food while well, you kind of get like that whiff of asphalt but it's kind of a good way it's like a nostalgic taste mm -hmm. and like smell. it's a clean asphalt it's yeah not like it's a, not dirty, you know, like but then... Right after it <laughs> yeah. rains, let's say you go out and you go and get some street food mm -hmm. and you're like, oh man, I've got this this great like street taco that just has some like roasted pork or roasted meat and, and pico de gallo on it and like the juices are running down the sides of your mouth. Uh, and, makes me so hungry, too. Oh my God, I'm really hungry. <laughs> you know? But that's what, that's like what a good mezcal tastes like and oh. God, so I thought you were describing a mezcal, but you ended mm -hmm. up talking about food. But well, it, it is, is. It, it is. It tastes it, like that. Yeah, it's... I, I don't know how to, they do it. Uh, can you tell us what the brand of this mezcal is? Yeah. This is uh, like a second bottle that we've gotten from yeah. them. So we have a couple of them. So they're, these are Mezcal Vago. Uh, can you see that here? No, we might be able to see it easier here. So these are the Mezcal Vago brands. Uh, I will say the Mezcal Vago Elote has changed labels recently. It will look, um, I don't, I know, I know that it is good for the brand and it's good for the bottle because it makes it look more approachable. It makes it look more like broadly appealing, but it does look kind of generic. Uh, I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean that in a good way. It's 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 something that you will now identify as okay. I'm comfortable buying this. It's not what looks like a prescription bottle or something that was like made in somebody's bathtub. <laughs> I love this. I love this, this label. Like, it that is such so a cool, cool. thing. Yeah. yeah, but it makes me it makes you feel like kind of like an insider when you get it. Mm -hmm. The new label, you'll see it and you'll totally do it. Mm -hmm. uh, oh. Do you prefer hot or cold? Hot or cold mezcal? I, I oh, like. Wait, I usually do room as, temperature. I don't think I've ever hot. had it hot. Oh, I'll have to try that. Oh, that's interesting. Thanks, Peter. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Well, great I think question. I'm look at that <laughs> suggestion. Yes, and you want to get see see it is a good smell when <laughs> in moderation. <laughs> it, it really is. Uh, but so this is the, this is what we're going to be using today is mezcal elote, and uh, it is an extremely approachable mezcal. It only has like the subtle little whiffs of all those things that I talked about. What you're going to get most is elote, which is corn. So most mezcal is made uh, purely with uh, uh, purely with uh, agave, not blue agave, just agave. Mm. And uh, but this one is made by uh, smoking agave with corn husk and the uh, the fronds of corn. Okay. So it gets like that. Like, a little like corn flavor to it, uh, but it's not overwhelming. This guy, and I think they're going to keep the labels for these types of releases. This is an ensemble release where they just blend a bunch of other uh, varietals of mezcals together. Uh, it's a it's a bottle pick from my friends at uh, Loyalty Liquor, where I love to find maybe we could stuff like this. do like a close up. You just yes. Uh, Point it and I will. Ooh, there we go. Look <laughs> yeah. at that. So it's called Mezcal Vago uh, Ensemble. Ensemble? Uh, en ensemble. How would you pronounce that? In ensemble. Ensemble. 
Well, it's not, yeah, it's not French. I think, it's, it's uh, yeah. yeah. Ensemble. No. But yeah, so, but when you see, Good like. Good option, yeah. Yeah, so you have the distiller or uh, the. So is that the, the, the name of, like that. of the person that distilled it? That, the distiller slash the person that, that mm-hmm. did the tasting. Ah, figured out cool. the, the mixture yeah. of varietals that's uh-huh. going to go into it. Okay. Yeah, so there's a whole, like, a whole deep dive into mezcal that we can get but we're here really for michelada michelada (laughs) michelada which which as i'm continuing to ramble and i've just completely alienated everybody on this uh (laughs) i can never pronounce michelada right Am I? I feel you're, like such, you're doing it right. I'm doing um, it because I practiced a lot. I did not want yeah, to be culturally insensitive. But I will be correcting you if you mispronounce it. <laughs> it's just it's spelled the same as Michelob. I, how how can I not just spell think of it, it as Nietzsche and Lada? Nietzsche is like Nietzsche. Like Nietzsche and Lada is like the Russian car. The yes. Soviet car. The Soviet car. <laughs> I don't know yeah. if it's so I'm gonna drive, drive, <laughs> drive Nietzsche in my Lada. There you go. And, and then Nietzsche Lada. Nietzsche Lada. Whatever works to help you remember. But let's let's get to it because I let's think get there's to it. Let's, let's make quite, it happen. Quite a few ingredients, right? There are, but it's kind of, it's one of those things, it's like a Bloody Mary where you kinda of have your base riff, mm-hmm. which is these two ingredients here and even that's debatable you'll have very animated forum conversations about whether clamato or tomato juice is the appropriate tomato based liquid that goes into uh michelada what is and in fact even the beer is debated uh some people will use dark i saw people talking about guinness oh no I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I, I, I have maybe no preconceived notions. It, I it just, is. It could be good. Yeah. I don't know. Guinness and tomato juice. Who knows? Who I knows? haven't tried it, so yeah, I, I cannot judge. That's true. We can't. <laughs> but what we can say is that a basic middle of the road Mexican lager is designed to be a palette in which you just build upon mm-hmm. a canvas. Those beers, uh, Corona, Tecate, Bohemia, all those things, they're just nice, light lagers that you expect to put salt and lime and tomato juice or whatever else it is in there. That's I think, there uh, wasn't Pacifico one more Pacifico, that you mentioned? Yes, yeah. Exactly. And you can find these, I couldn't find them at Target, but. <laughs> You yeah. found these at an actual like liquor store. Yeah, well, so, and that's I guess a Texas thing. Yeah, I think it might have to do with uh, import taxes. Mm. When I was in Virginia and South Carolina, Tecate was considered a cheap beer, and now in Texas, apparently, it is as expensive as any microbrew. Mm. So a six pack of this was like nine dollars in Texas, Interesting. which to me is kind of crazy. But whatever, it is good. It is a it good is beer. It is a good beer, yeah. Just because it was considered cheap in South Carolina, that does not mean that it is. Yeah, good. it's very light, and I, like I don't like beers that taste like beers. Yeah. Like with I hop, not I hop. IPAs. IPA. I hop. Hops and IPAs, because it's very bitter. I don't like bitter things. Speaking of things that are debatable and not but, bitter. Uh, I have gone back and forth. We tried a bunch of different variations. I do like uh, my uh, michelada with ice. Yes. Some people do not like it. I do. So what we're going to do is build off this ice. Mm -hmm. And the first thing... I agree. I don't know. Somehow the ice just added, even though it's like literally cubes of water, it, it somehow made it taste better. Yeah, well, there's certain really... things that do carry better. There's certain flavors that carry better with a little water. You'll see people uh, that drink a lot of scotch. They will usually add yeah. a few drops of water to it okay. as well. So it's not just in my head. It actually does add something to the, to yeah. the taste. Well, there's actually something about uh, tomato and alcohol. So there's certain aromatic compounds in tomatoes that can only be smelled slash tasted uh, in the presence of alcohol. Like what? I don't know. Oh, okay. like, try it. Well, that's why tomato and vodka sauce is a thing. Oh, that's interesting. I never thought 
like that alcohol could extract certain like flavors. I thought it was yeah. just I thought people were just combining them because they tasted yes. good. And they do, but Yes. And I forgot. <laughs> do something. Good um, thing I have this bowl here. Thank you, Wallace. Uh they said, uh, I like that you are both matching. Yes, you're both matching <laughs> your black shirts. Although I have blue glasses and oh, you yes. have pink glasses. Yes. So we are a little different. We're like a walking gender review. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we'll not get into that. Yes. All right. But I did, I did forget one important step while I was rambling. Uh, we want to rim the glass. Mm, yes. And how do you like make the, the tagine? Yes, so this tagine, well, this is actually, the traditional I feel like scent. Tagine should be pronounced tagine. It would be. J. Yeah, tagine is, a, is an Indian uh, oven. Tagine with a J. Yeah, tagine. Tagine. Yeah. Yes, so this would be tagine, not tagine. So all I'm doing is doing a little tagine salt spice mix, mm. which is what you'll see when you see that red stuff around any uh, you know, Mexican or well, what else did you have here? and a little bit of salt because mm -hmm. salt makes everything better. Yeah. And then we just take, just like any other time, you know, you rim the glass and you want some on the edge because that's, that's what people look at. You want to make sure that you get some of that nice salt around the edge of the glass. And we're just going to take it and rim. It's okay to be a little excessive. We just get it all on there. Up, da, 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 da. There we go. And you have your rim. So that's your decorative rim. And we're going to go a little crazier later. But now we can pour our ice back in there with our lime juice. So you don't really need um, a cocktail shaker for this, right? It's a cocktail that you build upon each other? Yes, it is a built cocktail. Built built. Worcestershire sauce is a optional ingredient. I, I like it. You sparingly Very though. sparingly. So there's there's a lot of like 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 anchovy undertones in it that if or fish sauce undertones and if you use any more than a few drops, it's yeah. gonna go from um, it's very subtle umami mm -hmm. to I'm tasting fish and vinegar. Mm -hmm. So be careful with that one. Uh, and yeah, that's about it for the backgrounds. I do like, oh, wait, whoops, I did forget one. Hot sauce. Ah. Uh, Tapatio is probably the preferred hot sauce for a michelada. 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 I almost, you got, I almost you messed got, it up. I almost messed it up, but I got it. <laughs> ah, yes. And that, again, is to taste. I like it spicy, and we're going to be using a lot of a lot of beer. This is a big glass. I like a big hearty, hearty drink. So we're going to do that and we're probably going to add a little more towards the end. Also, I love these little cans so I can just keep them under the counter. Yeah, they're so adorable. As I need a little Kamado. I, I think usually they come in, in larger bottles and when you open one of those, you feel yeah, now it's compelled to drink it all. Or, yeah, so I feel like these work really well for mixing cocktails. Yeah. And now what we do is, uh, so that it mixes effectively, we're going to take, and we're going to pour it aggressively, but we poured about two thirds of that can in, poured very heavily, and we will use the remainder of our can of Clamato to you know, tamp down the head of the beer, and it will also mix in. Boom. Oh. So we have the basis there of the michelada, and then we take And now we're just going to decorate it. We're going to do, let's just say we're going to use a little carrot. I like a good wedge of carrot in my Bloody Marys and in my michelada. Carrots are also fun to paint, so... Yes, that is an added benefit. So yeah. we're going to take this guy and we're going to just slam him in there. Yeah. And we're also going to take a nice little wedge because this is going to come, come in handy later. We're going to use him to hold stuff up. But we'll talk about that in a moment. Next, let's back this guy up a bit. And we're going to take 
There we go. Oh, thank you, Yolanda. She said it looks really good. Very carefully. And thank you, Yolanda. So we're just inserting the skewer into the lime, and we're doing it in a way that the lime is, uh, I guess, a like crescent moon on the top. Oh, a crescent moon on the top. Yes, I've got to watch. She tells me so much not to watch things, and then I do watch things. <laughs> it's, a, it's a hard life being married to an artist, <laughs> a content it's creator. It's not that hard. <laughs> yes. So we've, we've created this kind of half moon on the top of our skewer, and now we're taking a uh, an olive, and we're going to bring that down to the base of that moon to kind of create like a, you know, a crescent and a ball look that you see very often in cocktails. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the last little nuance of this is we're going to take Again, I'm being careful so I don't stab my finger. I'm laying it down on the cutting board and pushing it through there so it's nice and stable. I will take that. Oops, there we go. Yeah. Backwards. Yeah, and I'm taking that carrot to act as kind of a pedestal. Last but not least, with the remainder of that tahini, I will take that. And I will just dip my lime in it because it looks really cool to have mm -hmm. that reddish kind yeah. of burgundy uh, tahini. I just because I know it. the taste, it like it's, it's so mouth watering. The, yeah, yeah, I'm just like already <laughs> imagining what it tastes like because it's so good. Yes. And then for our last step, our final step, we're going to take this big wedge of pickle. We're going to jam it into the into the uh, michelada. We're going to use that to stir it up a bit, and we are going to use it as a little bit of extra structural reinforcement mm -hmm. on our skewer on top of, there we go, on top of that carrot. Boom. Oh, they can't see it. Oh, and you get <laughs> a big... There we go. Yeah, that's yes. such a fun garnish. I love that. You get a way to kind of have like a big... Standing up, Ooh, back scene, backstage, behind the scenes stuff. <laughs> All right, let me try it. Yes. Oh, you know, I did forget an important ingredient. What? Mezcal. Oh my god, <laughs> yeah, we were doing a mezcal michelada and he forgot. Can you just pour it on top? Yeah, I can pour it on top. That's no big deal. That's not, okay. Order is not important on these things. So, yeah, I'll do a mezcal float. After I sat there and talked about it for like <laughs> yeah. five freaking minutes. Uh, and this is a matter of taste. Uh, because it's big, I'm going to say maybe three quarter of an ounce. And there's also a lot of beer in it. All you're really doing is adding a little smokiness. And yeah, go ahead and stir it. You know how to do that. Just make sure that it like, like a little up and down motion to get it. Yeah. So it's not all just floating on the surface. All right, now I can try it? Now you can try it. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> mm. Tasty. Oh, it's so refreshing and oh my god. <laughs> yeah, this is this is uh, traditionally kind of like a, a hangover drink. It's yeah. like a Bloody Mary. And I guess it would be perfect for the summer, but you know oh, that is really good. living in Texas, summer comes and goes like every other day, so I feel like it's appropriate to have this drink whenever you want to. Yeah, how warm is it right now? It is It is like t-shirt weather, even though it was... Yes, it was. Mm -hmm. Oh, it was. That's right. Yes, it was. Yesterday was t-shirt yes. weather. This morning <laughs> was t-shirt weather. Now uh, it's, it's like full-on like, like, coat like weather. Like a jacket. Yeah, because <laughs> we have big storms. Hmm. Uh, Thank you, Yolanda. Yes, it is a much better... I agree, yes. It's so, like... Oh, I can't ex I can't describe it. Like the tahini makes it so delicious. It's like a Jolly Rancher, like that kind of like mm, the, the the taste, but then but better because it's savory and not sweet. Yeah, I like I like how anything that gives you a mouthful of flavor to you is a Jolly Rancher. <laughs> but it's true. It's a good it's a good description. That's why Jolly Ranchers are so tasty. They you know, fill your mouth with flavor. All right, now so let's, we, we are okay. painting. 
Oh, look at that. That is beautiful. I love Thank I love you. your new phone. Thank you. Hopefully um, this won't be glitchy like it was last time. But it appears like it, that it will be okay. Oh, it's... Yeah, so far, so good. All right. Oh, and uh, and while Volt is preparing, Yolanda, since you mentioned no. Bloody Mary, uh, oh, you need some water. Okay. Since you mentioned Bloody Mary, uh, this would this would actually be a variation, a riff on a Bloody Caesar. Oh. So uh, Bloody Caesar is, is a Bloody Mary made with uh, clamato. Um. And, yeah. Why is there uh? Why are there bubbles in my water? <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Can, can you try it again? <laughs> well, I, I poured it from the sink. Okay, I don't know why. I can't use that water with my watercolors. Was there was there soap in here? Did you maybe, recently wash this thing maybe. off? Maybe. It doesn't, doesn't look very clean, so I don't know. I have no idea what you did with it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so while Dan is uh, bringing me <laughs> the water, so what is a, a, a Bloody Caesar you said? Literally the same thing as a Bloody Mary, but with uh, with uh, Clamato rather than... Ah. Uh, what's in a Bloody Mary? What is the, the alcohol in there? Is that vodka? Actually, now that I think... It, it, it could be debatable now that I'm, I'm, I'm questioning it. Now I'm questioning my assumption. It, it, could, it could be with gin oh. uh, as well. But a Bloody Mary is vodka and tomato juice. Okay. And then... A bloody Caesar, I believe, is vodka and clamato, but it might be clamato and gin. Mm -hmm. and now I need to look that up later. All right, that well, gives while, me something to do. If anybody knows, well, let me know. Yeah, it's, while you're looking at this, it's not up. something I make that often. <laughs> uh, I, I decided to paint kind of more of a painterly version of this cocktail, so it's very, it's got very loose lines um, and not not as precise or like neat, I guess, as like the previous versions. I just because I just wanted to have fun with this and I want to encourage you to also have fun with your brush strokes like if you're feeling um, that you want to just kind of you know play around and see and like not have neat lines uh, I just want you to embrace that because it's just it's part of the process of experimenting to see what kind of look you like better and what you don't like um, so yeah experimentation highly recommended so I'm starting out with uh, two parallel lines for this. Uh, so I'm sketching out this, uh, I guess, Stein glass, right? That's the correct name for the. It's like a beer yes, glass. Yes, beer Stein. Beer Stein. Oh, uh, Laura's saying Bloody Mary with gin is a red snapper. Oh, interesting. All ah, right, nice. It's a cool name. I do like that name. So I'm sketching two parallel lines and then at the bottom, I'm going to connect them with a slightly curved line. And then I'll do one right on top, just a little bit higher up, kind of matching that same width. So two slightly curved lines here at the bottom to show the, the, the glass portion. Uh, and then the handle is just, uh, so it's going to be like, a, uh, let's see, a horizontal line. And then it's going to curve slightly. And then I'm going to do a vertical one and then a horizontal one again that kind of goes towards the glass. And then I'll just add another similar type of line, but just kind of smaller and inside so that you can see the handle of this. Fairly straightforward. And I'm gonna erase just a couple of these extra lines. And for this particular watercolor sketch, I'm like, uh, I'm, I'm applying a lot of pressure on my pencil so that the lines are very kind of um, darker and you can see them a lot better and I actually like that look and feel to this because it's just like a different style like you can embrace those pencil lines or you can even make them even more pronounced so if you have an outline you could do it in um, a pen or like a marker that has uh, um, let's see, waterproof ink so uh, otherwise if it's not waterproof like watercolors on top just not gonna work it's gonna be <laughs> one big mess um, but it's still it could be a fun style to try so I just again recommend that you experiment all right so here at the top I'm gonna do another slightly curved line to show the top of the gloss 
And then another line that's, so essentially it's like I'm sketching a little, um, not a little, it's, it's a very narrow type of oval. And then, let's see, so for the garnish, I'm going to start out with just going to sketch out kind of like this the the spear that Dan used for it to keep all the garnish together and then I will use that as my guide to position the different elements uh, for the lime it's just going to be like a half a circle shape the lime wedge and then we're going to have a, an oval for the olive and then uh, I'm going to do a little tiny circle inside to show like the up uh, the olive is, is stuffed with pepper and then there's a little slice of uh, carrot so that's just going to be like a little rectangular shape and then this wedge here is kind of like an elongated half circle or half oval shape and that's the the spear of the pickle, pickle yes pickle spear Mm. Oh, like Britney Spears, but pickle. Pickle Spears. <laughs> Pick, pickly Spears. Pickly. Um, well, all right. So on the comments. Yeah. Uh, yep. So Wanda, Yolanda was saying that Bloody Mary is usually made with vodka. It's absolutely correct. Uh, I was asking about the Bloody Caesar to see uh, if that was made with gin versus uh, vodka. Yeah. I think it's vodka also. Mm. Uh, uh, and I'm sorry. I don't know if it's a soft or a hard J in your name. That's, I think it's Majita, Majita Gibson. Uh, she says, hey, Volta. And uh, she says, true, wrong ink will smudge water. Oh, thank you. Yes. See, uh, I'm not lying to you guys. <laughs> yeah. Please my, let me know if I mispronounced your name. I'm so sorry. Uh, my favorite uh, type of waterproof pens are the Micron ones. Uh, they're, I would say, I'm pretty sure almost nearly all of them are have waterproof archival ink. So if you want to try out an ink and watercolor type of feel, um, those are great pens if you want to look for those. All right, so we'll get to painting, the fun part. Um, I am using a traditional brush this time because I, I found that that also helps me um, kind of be a little bit more loose and playful with my brush strokes if I'm using... What? You're using a normal brush? Yes, I'm using... Oh a my gosh. <laughs> Instead of um, a... Uh, brush pen? Brush pen, yes. Thank you. I like, I even like the way it looks right now. It looks very abstract. It's yeah. like a cubist. Yeah. Uh, art, what, art Deco? Is that the word I'm looking for? Sure, we'll go with that. Um, but it's essentially like a bunch of like geometric shapes that come together to form this cocktail, you know? And I'm right now just uh, adding a little bit of water inside and I'm just gonna like paint with water uh, around these little ice cubes which are forms of like little squares. So if you can see, uh, there's like a little bit of a glisten on the page. So we don't want to add too much water where it's dripping, but just enough so that there's like water to help uh, spread the pigments around. All right, and for the color, I since the um, this cocktail has kind of like a reddish orange type of look to it, I'm going to mix a couple of my reds that I have in my palette. So I recommend, you know, if you have some oranges or even like a touch of yellow, just to kind of get a variety of, so it's not just one sing singular shade, but you've got like some playfulness to it. So I've got a good mix here and I'm just going to start dropping. So by dropping, I literally just mean like adding just a touch of this color barely touching the surface with my brush, but you'll see that the pigment is spreading out so nicely on the paper and it's covering and it's only traveling in this area where I added water. So that's, you don't have to worry about it. You know, the water escaping or your color is kind of overflowing if, if you will. And I left, uh, so I'm going to like lift off a bit of a highlight here 
my light source is coming from the left hand side and that's just because I'm a lefty and it's just easier for me to do it that way. <laughs> Feel free to mix it up and have your light source or your little highlight on the opposite side. Yeah. Oh, and wow, there is a break in the conversation. All oh, right. Uh, so Laura is confirming based on Google that Bloody Caesar is made with vodka. Ah. So yes, I love it when I'm right. <laughs> Nothing makes me happier. Yeah. Uh, but more importantly, on the stuff that you know related to you, since this is your stream, uh, Magita is saying that, uh, and I guess I pronounced her name correctly because you didn't correct me. Uh, Magita, what on what technique? Yes. And uh, she says, what is, she's asking, what is your favorite watercolor to use? Oh, my favorite watercolor. Oh, that's a very good question, and I could literally spend the whole hour. Uh, but I. So the paints in this particular set, this palette, I just bought like a blank palette and I filled it up with uh, watercolor paints from the tube. I like to use those because it allows me to, uh, we'll just add a little bit of color at a time and then, you know, I can refill them if I run out. Um, but also I can like pick different colors that don't necessarily come in a set. So I guess to answer your question, so I just like, went into this, the watercolor zone. <laughs> um, my, some of my favorite watercolors are actually Daniel Smith. Um, no joke, that's also the name of my husband. He is Daniel Smith, uh, but there's also a brand of watercolors called Daniel Smith. I made those. Uh, they have been around for many years, like decades. Uh, Much like me. <laughs> yes. Yes, um, another brand is uh, that I really like is uh, Quor, uh, Q-O-R. Um, they're also another type of like professional watercolor paints. Um. <laughs> All right. I so, love that sound. That's one I've heard many times. <laughs> All right. Uh, so I paint it. You know, uh, if your uh, highlight keeps disappearing, just uh, come in with a clean brush and lift off just a little bit of the. And you can also, um, you know, kind of grab some other reds and if you'd like to just drop drop that kind of on the edges of the glass and the color will just naturally kind of blend in and travel and it's, it's really cool to see because it gives it more of like a playful type of look as opposed to a very like polished or, you know, precise sketch. All right, so now uh, with uh, I'm going to grab a little bit of Payne's Gray and I'm diluting it with water. It's going to be fairly light in value. And I will use kind of like exaggerated strokes to outline. Like even painting, you know, these lines right outside. But I am I am being a little bit careful so that um, the gray brush stroke isn't right next to um, the red because otherwise it it'll start to bleed in together and it might look a little you know messy. But actually, like sometimes that those little accidents like they make some really cool cool effects. So I'm actually gonna intentionally paint right next to to this area and you can see here um, some of the red is like inside of this gray but it's that's totally fine we're doing like a little playful kind of painterly look to this i'm very happy yolanda is, is excited and questioning about uh daniel smith watercolor <laughs> Yes, I, I totally made it. I will take complete credit for yeah. arguably the most famous watercolor <laughs> in the world. Yeah, that's me. Sure. Not my very common name. I, I will say, though, um, you know, having professional paints is great. They are like butter. They just are so nice. Butter. But it's not absolutely a requirement to enjoying painting with watercolors. So the most important part, I would say, is having the right paper. So if your paper is too thin, it will, you will not have a great experience. So I would rather like recommend someone invest in a good paper and that's 140 pounds at least in weight than like go out and buy really expensive watercolors because 
that'll like completely ruin your experience of the paper is too thin. Yeah. And we don't want that. Yeah. We don't want you to have a bad time. <laughs> in, in fact, like, like many hobbies, I feel like the most expensive or the higher end things are only viable once you've kind of figured out your technique or your interest or your stuff because it, the like, like those are for niche interests same with like if you go out and you buy the most expensive cognac or you go out and you buy the most expensive whiskey you're probably not going to like it because they're designed for a very specific audience uh same thing with uh with computers same thing with any of the other crap that i'm interested in video games oh i'm gonna go and buy the most expensive video game well it's gonna be some like limited edition weird game that was made for like two weeks on the playstation 2 you're, you're not gonna like it if you're not familiar with it all right i don't know. let me talk about your people uh okay <laughs> Uh, Maria is a so beautiful is one of the things I smashing to do. So I guess that's context of something you said. Oh. But she's smashing something. Uh, Majita is uh, saying that I'm pronouncing her name correctly, which is a rarity for me, and I'm very happy about it. Uh, <laughs> she also says that uh, she is left-handed, but a little bit right-handed, depending on oh. the art medium. Very similar to you. Yes, I actually write with my right hand, but I, I, I do everything else with my left hand. So, fun fact. <laughs> yeah, well, that was probably the way you were raised. Yeah. 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 Like, it wasn't until, you know, the past, like, 15 years that teachers, right. like, oh, you're writing with yeah. your left hand. Yeah. It's Write fine. With your left hand. It's fine. I'm not, I'm not uh, upset. <laughs> I'm ambidextrous a little bit. <laughs> yeah, it's a benefit. Yeah. You can do whatever you want to do with any hand. Break a wrist. Use the other one. There you go. But let's let's not let's not do that. Let's not break any wrists. Not wrong. All right. So I wanted to show you something here that um, kind of happened. Like a little. This, I added a little bit of red to show the pepper inside of the olive, and it you know got into my green. And I personally like when that when this happens. Like you can go in and just me add maybe a touch more red. So it like pops a little bit more, but it's just like, you know, keep it playful. Like this is, we're just having fun here. And then for the like tahin, I'm just gonna do like some orange, just orange little dots on the line. And also on the glass. So I'm just adding like, applying very little pressure, just adding tiny little specks to represent that rim I hope all your, uh, your all, all the sweet friends don't mind that I'm contemplating the ingredients for the pizza that I'll be making oh no um, you should uh, tell them what, <laughs> what ingredients wait last time you had a really good in, um, pizza well I wanted to pair with what we yeah. just made. So I'm gonna use still pasta sauce, but I'm gonna add some of the tapatillo to it to kind of make like a light salsa. Mm -hmm. uh, then, you know, mozzarella, but also uh, the you know, melange a trois from Trader Joe's of peppers. Uh, some onion, thinly sliced, and some pre-cooked chicken breast that I am going to dust with tahini. Ooh, I love that. Oh, I'm so hungry, Ooh, you guys. and some garlic powder because garlic powder makes everything better. Yes, yes it does. Oh yeah, last time we were talking about the pizza too. Yeah, the, the uh, yes. So, if anybody was listening last week, I was talking about if buffalo sauce would pair with uh is it curry powder it wasn't curry powder it was a uh, shoot why is the name escaping me oh my gosh uh 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 uh, uh. i'm gonna feel so embarrassed when i remember uh gar masala. gar masala and let me tell you oh my gosh buffalo sauce and garam masala pair amazing when it comes to chicken 
It's just kind of like this spectrum of sweet and spiciness. Give that a try if you're ever bored. Oh, oh Vegeta says it looks really good. Thank you, Vegeta. It was very delicious. I think she's talking about me. Yes, she's talking about. Yeah, I knew. Oh, yeah. That's why I said. Oh, thank you. On my it. behalf. FYI. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Nobody cares about my pizza right <laughs> no, now. No, <laughs> no. All right. Now I just added a. I added a cast shadow with a little bit of paint gray, just you know, make it a little bit darker than the rest of the glass so that it really pops off the page. And don't don't feel don't be afraid to like experiment with different levels of darkness. If you add a little bit too much, you can always like lift it off with your brush. And then I think just to kind of finish this off and like keep the painterly, very like playful vibe, I'm going to do a few splatters on this. So I just like loaded up my brush with some red and orange and I'm just going to gently tap. Actually, I'm going to maybe like not so gently, but <laughs> <laughs> just do a couple of splatters because I think it just like adds a little bit of a fun and unex unexpected type of look to it. I hope you experiment with this. It, it could get a little bit messy on like the outskirts of, of your area, but it's not not super messy. All right, and there you have it, a Michelada watercolor cocktail. Michelada. You got it, Dan. <laughs> Not oh, to thank you so, so much. We, we love comments. It's so nice. Yes, to thank you, you everyone, so much for joining us. I'm dumping out Where mozzarella. What is that little? Oh, that's your color snacks. There I am. Right. Um, <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Uh, we hope this inspires you to make a very delicious michelada or maybe even paint it. Yeah. Uh, next next week is, uh, on the 22nd is Margarita Day, National Margarita, Margarita Day. And I have a feeling that we'll, we'll probably be doing a mezcal margarita. Uh, but, uh, make, we are setting make the it, stage for make some mezcal fun. stuff. Yeah, make it fun because uh, it has to be fun to paint as well. Mm. So mm. it cannot be like mezcal is a clear alcohol, and it cannot be clear. Well, last last year we did a uh, prickly pear mezcal margarita, mm. which was gorgeous. I wonder if we can find that again. I doubt it. It's probably we'll a little to too late, but I feel yeah. like we could do something for raspberries. Yeah. Well, or strawberries. We'll, we just we'll got see. some strawberries. They're stay, gonna make strawberry syrup. Stay tuned, and I hope you'll join us next week for a margarita a special mezcal margarita episode. Yes, and always feel free to uh, you know you don't you don't just have to talk to Volta. You can reach out to me on LinkedIn too. I'm, yes. I'm there. She always tags me. Yes, Daniel Smith. So if you got any questions about <laughs> you know booze or food or data science, <laughs> yeah. yeah, reach out to me. I'm, yes. I'm, I'm well informed about eggs. <laughs> He's want. very informed about eggs. Yes. Uh, yeah. Well, all right. well, we'll talk about yeah, that. Yeah, we'll talk about another. that some other time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But thank you all you know? so much for joining, and I hope you have an awesome rest of your week. Uh, thank you all. Bye. Thank you.